स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल लर्न अबाउट द पॉसली फ्लो ओके एंड द बेसिक एट्रीब्यूट्स इन कनेक्शन विद पॉसली फ्लो ओके सो पॉसली फ्लो इज़ अ काइंड ऑफ फ्लो इन विच वी स्टडी अबाउट लेमिनार फ्लो ओके एंड लेमिनार फ्लो इन विच आइदर द लेमिनार फ्लो अकरिंग थ्रू सम पाइप सिलेंड्रिकल पाइप ओके और लेमिनार फ्लो अकरिंग बिटवीन टू स्टेशनरी पैरल प्लेट्स ओके मीन्स फ्लो इज अकरिंग बिटवीन द टू प्लेट्स सैंडविच फ्लो ओके सो लेमिनार फ्लो थ्रू सम सिलेंड्रिकल पाइप एंड लेमिनार सैंडविच फ्लो बिटवीन टू पैरल प्लेट्स कम्स अंडर द कैटेगरी ऑफ पॉइसली फ्लो ओके हवेवर रिमेंबर दिस थिंग दैट इन केस द फ्लो इज द लेमिनार फ्लो इज अकरिंग बिटवीन द पैरल प्लेट्स द पैरल प्लेट्स आर नॉट मूविंग दे आर स्टेशनरी सो मेनी टाइम्स इट बिकम्स डिफिकल्ट दैट हाउ टू लर्न द स्पेलिंग ऑफ दिस पॉसली फ्लो इट इज वेरी सिंपल सी इट इज कंपोज ऑफ टू वर्ड्स पी ओ आई एस ई दैट इज पॉइस ओके दैट इज अ यूनिट ऑफ विस्कॉसिटी पॉइस ओके एंड यू आई डबल एल ई उल्ली ओके यू कैन सी सो जस्ट कंबाइनिंग दिस पॉइस यूनिट ऑफ विस्कॉसिटी एंड यू आई डबल एल ई यू विल गेट द स्पेलिंग पॉसली फ्लो ओके सो वी विल नॉट लर्न अबाउट द डेरिवेशन ऑफ द डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ फॉर्मूला वी विल लर्न अबाउट द फाइनल एक्सप्रेशन विच आर हैविंग देयर इंपॉर्टेंस इन कॉम्पिटिशन एग्जाम्स एज वेल एज यूनिवर्सिटी एग्जामिनेशन नाउ वॉट इज अ लेमिनार फ्लो लेमिनार फ्लो इज अ काइंड ऑफ फ्लो इन विच द लेयर ऑफ फ्लू फ्लो ओवर ईच अदर इन अ वेल डिफाइंड पाथ इन अ वेल डिफाइंड ऑर्डर्ड फैशन ओके फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू कैन सी दैट दिस इज अ फ्लू जेट विच इज Ultimately, moving over some solid surface. So, what happens that whenever a flow occurs over some solid surface, okay, you can see this is a solid surface. Okay, when the fluid starts flowing over the surface, then the surface start exerting shear force on that flow due to the effect of friction. Okay, the friction occurring between the fluid and the solid surface. But the effect of that friction is up to some limit as we go in normal direction from that solid surface. Okay. so up to the length the effect is significant that length is called as boundary layer thickness that's it okay and remember that the first few layers very first few layers of fluid which are flowing over some solid surface almost has zero velocity because maximum amount of shear force is exerted by the solid surface on those layers which are very very close to that surface so you can imagine this thing that ideally the first layer of fluid okay first sheet of fluid which is just in immediate contact with the solid surface has zero velocity and in case the solid surface itself is moving then that first layer starts moving with the velocity of that solid surface itself it is like this okay now in possibly flow i will not tell you about how to derive the equations okay i am telling you some equations i am not going to derive these equations just these are the general attributes okay in regards of possibly flow so these formulas you have to learn i will guide you that how to learn them okay and very much helpful in competitive exams and and university examinations okay so i am taking the first case in which laminar flow is occurring through some round pipe okay so what happens when the flow is occurring then i told you that the fluid is flowing and the inner peripheral surface of this pipe will start exerting its shear force due to friction on the fluid flow just like this that the solid surface start exerting its frictional force on the flowing fluid similarly the inner peripheral surface of this pipe all around okay will start exerting its frictional force on the fluid flow so what will happen the layer of fluid which is in immediate contact with this inner peripheral surface will have zero velocity okay and as we go far away from the surface the velocity will start increasing in case velocity is there in x direction means fluid is flowing in x direction first few layers which are in immediate contact with this inner peripheral surface of this pipe will have zero velocity and as we go away from this inner peripheral surface then the effect of this surface start diminishing so ultimately at the center the velocity in x direction will be maximum but the velocity over the inner peripheral surface of the flowing fluid will be zero so this is the profile of velocity okay you can see it is a parabolic profile over the center the velocity is maximum and over the inner peripheral surface the velocity is zero okay so at any point this formula you can see inside this orange box okay this is the center line okay from the center line in case you are moving in radial direction suppose at a distance small r okay so at a distance small r in case you want to find out what is the velocity of fluid in x direction at that point this is the formula u equals to 
minus 1 by 4 mu mu is the viscosity of the fluid okay and dp by dx the rate of change of pressure with respect to the distance it means like this suppose i say that when the fluid flows 1 meter then the pressure drops 3 newton per meter square so dp by dx is that okay remember this thing that fluid always flows from high pressure to low pressure so when the fluid is flowing continuously then definitely along x direction the pressure will be reduced because fluid always flows from high pressure to low pressure so dp by dx will always be negative because p2 is smaller than p1 so dp is what p2 minus p1 and dx is what x2 minus x1 so x2 minus x1 is positive but dp is always negative okay so why negative sign is over here the reason being that dp by dx is negative so to compensate that this is since velocity in x direction is always positive okay either maximum velocity at the center or zero velocity over the inner peripheral surface negative sign is for compensating that thing because dp by dx is already negative okay so mu is the viscosity of the flowing fluid and capital r is the radius of the pipe okay radius of the pipe which is fixed okay so how to learn this formula you can see this formula has three parts that is 1 by 4 mu dp by dx and capital r square minus r square okay so remember 1 by 4 mu mu is the viscosity dp by dx is the rate of change of pressure in x direction okay with respect to the x itself and capital r square is the radius of the pipe and small r square as we are moving moving along in radial direction from the central line then the particular point is at a distance r so that r we will keep over here so this is the formula of velocity at any point now you can easily see over here that when this small r becomes capital r it means we are at the inner peripheral surface okay because r is the capital r is the radius of pipe so in case small r becomes capital r the u is zero so over the inner peripheral surface the velocity of flowing fluid is zero and when it will be maximum definitely at the center because the central line of the flowing fluid is at farthest distance from this inner peripheral surface so least effect of the friction taking place on that central line due to this inner peripheral surface okay so keeping the r equals to zero in that case for central line small r will be zero then this is what the maximum velocity which is over the center okay similarly you can see over here that maximum velocity is at the center and minimum that is zero over the inner peripheral surface so there must be some average velocity neither maximum nor zero something in between so that average velocity formula is given by minus 1 by 8 mu dp by dx r square okay so what do you see that this is the maximum velocity okay so in case in the denominator you are multiplying with 2 4 into 2 is 8 you are getting the average velocity so we can say that maximum velocity upon average velocity the difference is only a factor of 2 in case you are multiplying 2 with this average velocity 2 8 will be cancelled it become 4 so it will become maximum velocity so this is an important conclusion that when possibly flow is occurring through some round pipe cylindrical pipe then the ratio of maximum to average velocity is given by 2 so hypothetically you can assume that all the layers of fluid are moving with this average velocity now in case we are taking two points which are l distance apart okay any two points suppose this point and this point which are l distance apart so between those two points the difference in pressure p1 minus p2 is given by 32 into u average mu l upon d square l is the distance between those two points d is the diameter of pipe okay and u average i already told like this okay and mu is the viscosity of the flowing fluid this formula is also called as possibly formula okay which tells that in case laminar flow is occurring through some pipe then what will be the change in pressure between two points which are l distance apart okay so you can see here it is p1 minus p2 okay this is positive because u average is positive mu cannot be negative l cannot be negative and diameter cannot be negative so it means what that p1 is always greater than p2 because in case p2 goes to the rhs it becomes p2 plus something so p1 is always greater than p2 so it means what within the flow the pressure continuously decreases now this is the shear stress profile i told you that the layers which are in immediate contact with the inner peripheral surface first few layers which are in immediate contact with the inner peripheral surface are imparted with maximum shear stress okay shear force okay so shear stress formula is given by tau equals to minus dp by dx r by 2 see r is calculated from the center okay so when r becomes capital r it means we are over the 
inner peripheral surface of this pipe over there you will get maximum shear force okay and when r becomes zero means exactly at the central line then the shear stress is zero because r is zero then tau is zero again why there is negative sign over here because dp by dx is already negative okay so it is negative so to compensate that shear stress is al always positive so negative is applied over here now the second case of possibly flow that the flow is occurring between two parallel plates okay you can see these are the two parallel plates so in this case these two parallel plates the top and the bottom one will also exert their frictional force on the flowing fluid you can see that fluid is fluid is flowing in x direction like this okay remember over here we are believing that shear force is exerted only by this surface and the bottom surface these side walls are not included in this case okay we are believing that these side walls are not exerting any as such kind of shear force just these two surfaces are exerting their shear force okay so in this case also we can easily imagine that the first few layers of fluid which are in immediate contact with the inner surface of these two plates will have zero velocity and the layer which is running at the center of the two plates since the central line is at farthest distance from these inner surfaces of these two plates so over there the effect of frictional force of these plates will be minimum so at the center the velocity is maximum and over the inner peripheral surface of these two plates okay the velocity is zero so this is the velocity profile the formula is this u equals to minus 1 by 2 mu dp by dx okay what is dp by dx again the same thing rate of change of pressure with respect to the displacement of fluid in x direction okay so 1 by 2 mu dp by dx in the bracket ty minus y square now what is this t t is the distance between the two plates small t okay and y is what if we are considering this plate as at zero y this is y direction this is x direction so this plate is at zero y okay so along y direction a particular point can be termed as y in case we are moving in upward direction vertically upward then any point can be considered as a point y okay so you can see this formula is also like this it contains three parts here also three parts that is minus 1 by 2 mu dp by dx which is negative this is the reason that we are applying negative over here to make it positive compensate that thing and the third part is ty minus y square y is the particular point as we are going up from this bottom plate okay so ty minus y square now you can easily see in this formula in case you are keeping y equals to 0 okay it means what t into 0 0 minus 0 square 0 so 0 will, will be multiplied with this so you will get 0 velocity so when y is 0 that is the inner peripheral surface of this bottom plate the u is 0 similarly second point that is at a distance t t is the distance between the two plates so in case you are putting y equals to t so this will become t square here also t square so t square minus t square is 0 so you will get u equals to 0 so over the inner peripheral surface of this second plate which is at a distance t from this bottom plate will also have zero velocity so this is the velocity formula okay now what is the maximum velocity i told you that it will be at the central line okay so in case you are keeping y equals to t by 2 over here in this formula y equals to t by 2 you will get maximum velocity so what you will get t square by 2 minus t square by 4 so simple y equals to t by 2 so t into t t square by 2 minus t by 2 whole square is t square by 4 so t square by 2 minus t square by 4 you will get what t square by 4 itself so that 4 will go and multiply with this 2 you will get this u max so uh, 4 into 2 is 8 so 1 by 8 mu dp by dx into t square okay will be the maximum velocity that is at the central line of these two plates now again here also there is a case of average velocity neither maximum nor zero so that average velocity formula equals to minus 1 by 12 mu okay in place of 8 the only difference is it is 12 minus 1 by 12 mu dp by dx into t square now you can see that in case you are multiplying this average velocity with 3 by 2 you will get maximum velocity okay 3 by 2 okay so 3 into 4 is 12 4 into 2 is 8 so in case you are multiplying u average with 3 by 2 you will get u max so the ratio of u max and u average in case possibly flow is occurring between two parallel plates then this ratio is equals to 3 by 2 and again in case you are choosing two points which are l distance apart then the difference in pressure in case fluid is moving in x direction will be p1 minus p2 equals to 12 mu u average l upon t square okay you can see that the difference between these two formulas for round pipe cylinder pipe it is 32 u average mu l upon d square here 
it is 12 mu u average l here it is l here also l okay u average is there and mu is there so in the numerator u average l is there in this cylindrical pipe also but the only difference is in the case of round pipe it is 32 multiplied and in case of between the plates it is 12 multiplied and in the denominator diameter square is there in this case but in this case we have to keep the t t is the distance between the two plates so this is the pressure difference formula and you can see over here that this rhs cannot be negative so p1 equals to p2 plus that positive quantity it means in case fluid is moving in a direction then pressure always reduces now shear stress formula okay that also at the inner peripheral surface of these two plates maximum shear stress and at the center it is minimum that is zero this is the formula minus 1 by 2 dp by dx t minus 2y now in case you are keeping over here y equals to t by 2 okay because t by 2 is the central line so 2 into t by 2 is what t itself okay so t minus t is what zero so at the central line the shear stress is zero and similarly in case you are putting y equals to t you will get what t minus 2t that is equals to minus t okay minus minus plus so you will get maximum shear stress at distance t from this bottom plate similarly in case you are putting y equals to 0 then also you will get t only okay so at the inner peripheral surface of this bottom plate the shear stress is maximum and same over the inner peripheral surface of this top plate there also the shear stress is maximum putting y equals to 0 and putting y equals to t you can find that shear stress okay so these are the two cases of the possible flow that in case laminar flow occurs between either cylindrical pipe or laminar flow occurs between two parallel plates then these are the associated formulas now remember that in case anyhow one of the plate starts moving in parallel direction relative to other surface suppose this surface becomes stationary and this starts moving in parallel direction in that case it remains no more a possible flow it becomes couts flow so in this lecture i have told you about the two kinds of possible flow and the different formulas associated with those thank you